Chapter 5 is going to be all about using derivatives to analyze functions. To um, Just looking at the behavior of the derivative tells you something about the function itself. So section 1 is about a theorem called the mean value theorem. And it is a justification theorem for the AP test. So it's a, a big one, kind of like the intermediate value theorem that you've been using a lot so far. Um, it's an, just like the intermediate value theorem, it's an existence theorem. It's not telling you exactly the address of where something happens. It's just promising you that it, it exists. So here's what the mean value theorem says. It says, if a function f is continuous over a closed interval and differentiable over the open interval, then there exists a value c on the open interval such that the derivative at c is equal to the average rate of change um, over a comma b. Um, I have a visual for that, so that's just kind of... Um, we're saying that the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change at some point on the interval. Um, in the real world, an example of this would be if I told you, hey, you know, I, I drove to school today and my um, average speed was 40 miles per hour. You can say with certainty that there was some time on my drive to school that I was going exactly 40 miles an hour. And that's because of the mean value theorem. So here's a picture. Um, this is a visual. So I have this differentiable function, which means it doesn't have any cusps. It doesn't have any corners. It doesn't have any gaps. Um, it's smooth and differentiable. And I promise you that if I draw a secant line between A and B, I promise you that there has to be at least one tangent line with that same slope on the interval from A to B. For this particular graphic, you might be recognizing that there's another place where you have a tangent line with that same slope somewhere along there. Um, it doesn't say how many. It just says, I guarantee you that there will be at least one time when your tangent line has the same slope as your secant line or when your average rate of change is equal to your instantaneous rate of change. When I told you that I drove to school and I was my average speed was 40 miles an hour, you knew that my average, you knew that I was going exactly 40 miles per hour at least once on my drive to school, but it might have happened more than one time. Um, again, this is just an existence theorem. It just says, yeah, there exists at least one time when that happened. Before you can use the mean value theorem, you have to make sure that you have a continuous differentiable function. So first of all, this is a continuous function because I can plug in all of these numbers. There's no um, asymptotes. There's no, um, there's no discontinuities. So yeah, this is continuous. Um, but I need to check for differentiability. And so the way I'm going to do that is by taking a derivative. And then I'm going to rewrite that derivative as well using positive exponents so that I can take a look at it. When I do that, I see, oh, it's a good thing I rewrote that with positive exponents because I see that if x is equal to 0, I would have an asymptote. So the derivative does not exist at x equals 0. And so no, the mean value theorem does not apply. It's not differentiable at x equals 0. If I wanted to go through the work of showing whether that's a cusp or a corner or a vertical asymptote, I could, but at least I know the derivative doesn't exist at that point. So I know I can't use the mean value theorem. Here's a graphical, can I use the mean value theorem? So if I'm going, if I'm looking at this graph and I'm going from the interval from negative one to, oops, from negative one to two, this function is differentiable on that interval, not including the endpoints. It's also continuous on that interval. When we say continuity and we're at an endpoint, the limit only has to exist from one direction. So this is continuous and it's differentiable from negative one to two. So yes, I can use the mean value theorem on that interval. OK, 
Okay, if I want to do the mean value theorem from negative 2 to 2, because there's a discontinuity, I can't use that because there's a discontinuity at x equals negative 1. And then if I wanted to think about the interval from 0 to 5, I cannot use the mean value theorem because there's a corner. Ah, everything's going crazy. Because there is, I can't use it because there's a corner at x equals 2. I have two different slopes coming together at that point. So before you start using mean value theorem, make sure it applies. Make sure you have continuity and differentiability. All right. Given that f is a differentiable function on the closed interval from negative 1 to 3, with selected values shown in the table below, does f prime of c equal 2 for any value of c on the interval? Okay, so this is a, the way that a mean value theorem question might be asked of you. Um, we don't know anything special about f prime, like we don't, what's special about 2? I would recommend we look at the endpoints. Let's look at what is f of 3 minus f of negative 1 over 3 minus negative 1. If that's 2, then the mean value theorem would show would um, work here. So let's go ahead and do that. f of 3 is 16. f of negative 1 is 8. Um, 3 minus negative 1 is 4. So we have 8 over 4, which is 2. Okay, so with the average rate of change is 2, and because this is a differentiable function, it's also continuous. So since it's differentiable and continuous, then the mean value theorem applies. And yes, it guarantees that there is a value C on the interval for which the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. Um, if you're going to use the mean value theorem, make sure that you have justification, that you have a continuous differentiable function. All right. Um, we're looking for values of C that satisfy the mean value theorem. Um, for ease, I'm just going to say that I know that um, 2 comma 2 is on the graph because I can see that it's on the graph, and I know that 4 comma negative 2 is on the graph because I can see that it is. So since that's true, I know that the average rate of change is going to be, um, so this point is 2 comma 2, and this point is 4 comma negative 2. I just want to point out, I can figure that out by plugging numbers here. Just for ease, I'm going to assume that the graph is accurate. So if I do that, I have negative 2 minus 2 over 4 minus 2, which would be negative 4 over 2, or negative 2. So I'm looking for a place where the slope is equal to negative 2 on that interval. So I'm going to go ahead and take a derivative. And then I'm going to look for values of c, so I'm going to look at that derivative, but with c's in it. I know that they exist because the mean value theorem promises me that they do. I have a continuous differentiable polynomial function. So I know that there's a value that exists, so now I'm just going to try to find it. So I have 3c squared minus 18c. I'm going to add this 2 over, so I have plus 26 equals 0. Now I have a quadratic equal to 0, so I can use any of my skills with quadratics. Um, I happen to know, because I've tried this problem already, I know that factoring is not going to work. So I'm going to use my old friend, the quadratic formula. So opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Well, a is 3, so all over 6. A 
and I'm not too proud to grab a calculator at this point and finish that problem. Um, when I do that, I have 18 plus uh, a square root of square root of 12 over 6. If I want to be extra fancy, I could say, oh, plus or minus, I could say 18 divided by 6 is 3. Um, and then 12 is the same thing as 2 times the square root of 3. So 3 plus or minus root 3 over 3. And um, square root of 3 over 3 is, uh, you know, less than 1. And then 3, so it's a little bit over 3 and a little bit less than 3. Both of those two points are on the interval, so these are my two possible answers of places where um, I have a slope of negative 2. It's okay to have two different answers as long as it's on the open interval from 2 to 4, and these two numbers are, they're both acceptable. All right, so this one is asking about this rational function, whether, whether I have any values that satisfy the mean value theorem. So I should be thinking, is it continuous? Well, if x equals 0, I would have a vertical asymptote, but at my interval is from 1 to 4. So I'm OK. X is, con it is continuous. Now I'm going to think about um, making my life a little bit easier because we're divided by a monomial here. So I like rewriting this as x over 3 minus 3 over x, because this is heart-shaped, so I can divide by that monomial. Um, and I even like writing this a little bit differently as 1 3rd x minus 3x to the negative 1, because that's going to make my derivative easier. So then I need to find the, um, the mean value. So the, the average rate of change would be y of 4 minus y of 1 over 4 minus 1, which is 3. So y of 4 would be 4 thirds minus 3 fourths, and y of 1 would be 1 third minus 3 over 1. It's all over 3. So I can find a common denominator. I have 16 minus 9 over 12 minus... Um, 1 minus 9, negative 8 thirds. Um, so I have 7 twelfths plus uh, 32 twelfths times 1 third. So that's 39, but 39 divided by 3 is 13. 13 twelfths is my average rate of change. So now I'm going to look at the derivative. y prime is equal to 1 third minus oh, plus 3x to the negative 2. I'm going to set those equal to, so 1 third, I'm, look, I'm looking for c here. And then I'm going to subtract 1 third, so I have 3c to the negative 2 equals 13 minus Four, so 9 twelfths. Now I'm going to divide by 3. And now I'm going to, okay, so now I'm going to reduce my fraction. And then I'm going to reciprocate, recipro make everything reciprocals. <laughs> and then I have c squared equals 1 half, oh, no, I'm, I didn't make a reciprocal. So c squared is equal to 2, because I got rid of my negative exponent. And so then if I take the square root, I have, oh, no, it's equal to 4. c squared is equal to 4. So c is equal to plus or minus 2, but minus 2 is not on my interval. So I'm going to ignore that one and just use c is equal to 2.